Hey folks, Ray from DCRamica.com here. Today, Garmin has finally released their Bluetooth Smart Update for the Garmin Vector 3 pedals. Now, you remember Vector 3 came out last August. It was announced at Eurobike 2017. Uh, and it started shipping in October, mid-October 2017. And it more or less caught up with shipping until like the end of December. And then it started to get backlogged again. And I think they're hoping to get caught up in the next couple of weeks. Nonetheless, one of the things that was missing the entire time was a Bluetooth Smart Support, meaning that you couldn't broadcast to Zwift or a Polar or a Sunto device on Bluetooth Smart, only Amp Plus. But they did promise Bluetooth Smart support um, all along, just simply in case of when that was gonna get rolled out. Initially, they had said the end of September, then October, then in November, they skipped December entirely, then it became January, and now February, and we are finally here. We now have it, the firmware is out. Now there's a couple ways you can go about updating it. One is to use a Garmin Edge, um, in particular an Edge 520, 820, or 1030. Um, so any of those three devices will automatically update using Garmin servers. The way it works is if you already paired Vector to those devices, the next time those Edge devices talk to Garmin servers, it'll pull it on the update, and then in turn, the next time you pair to your, or connect to your uh, Vector 3 pedals, it'll tell you you need to update them. Um, as you can see here, it's pretty straightforward. The whole process only takes a couple minutes to do. Um, once the update is on your Edge device. Getting the update on your Edge device, though, can take a little bit of time. Uh, the updates start today, but it could take up to 24 hours for those updates to show up, and then you gotta wait for the time for it to actually sync to your device. So that's something that, it's not like a super fast method, but when it works, it works pretty darn well. The second method is your phone. You can go ahead and use the Garmin Connect mobile app on Android, iOS, and I think even like Windows phone, uh, to go ahead and update your pedals. It simply connects to over Bluetooth Smart. Yes, the same Bluetooth Smart that's not yet enabled. It'll actually connect to that just fine via that Bluetooth Smart. It turn updates the firmware and then allows you to connect to other things via Bluetooth Smart. In particular, that's the broadcasting of the power meter sensor. So you're getting your power, your cadence over Bluetooth Smart. Now, there are a couple of caveats to be aware of on the Bluetooth Smart side in particular. Number one is you won't get any of the Garmin Cycling Dynamics metrics. That's only an AMP Plus, simply because there's no standard that exists for Bluetooth Smart. So it's AMP Plus or bust for that kind of stuff. So that's things like the platform center offset, that's a seated standing time, any of that stuff, AMP Plus only. The second thing to keep on Bluetooth Smart is you're limited to one concurrent connection, meaning if you're paired via Zwift, you can't go off and pair up Polar head unit or a Sunto head unit, anything like that. Only one computer app can connect over Bluetooth Smart to the Vector 3 pedals. However, you can go ahead and use AMP Plus as many times as you want concurrently as Bluetooth Smart. So that's what I do. I go ahead and use my Garmin 520 in this case um, with Vector 3, and then I in turn also pair it to Zwift over Bluetooth Smart at the exact same time. So that way you have a copy here in the Garmin as well as on Zwift, no problems there. Speaking of Zwift, one thing that's actually really interesting about the way Garmin has implemented Bluetooth Smart support on the Vector 3 is that it shows up as a single device. Now you may be saying to yourself, well, that sounds pretty obvious, but it's actually not. If you go ahead and use a PowerTap P1 pedals, or the Favero Asioma pedals, those show up as two separate pedals, two separate devices. The challenge is neither Zwift or Trainer Road or really any other app out there can go ahead and pair those two things together and make them one cohesive unit. So in the case of Zwift, you're forced to choose. Do you want your left pedal data or your right pedal data? That's it. But with Vector 3, they've actually melded that into one. So in the case of Zwift, you see a single cohesive sensor as Vector 3, which means that you'll go ahead and get your left and right data combined correctly together as your total power, as opposed to having simply left doubled or right doubled. That's also interesting for devices like Sunto, which can't pair to both the left and the right pedal at once. They can only pair to one sensor at once. So in that case, that works out great for them. In the case of Polar, they've actually already supported left and right pairing since the very beginning. So it doesn't really matter too much to them. So a couple final questions that I think are going to be pretty common here. Uh, number one is should I use AMP Plus or Bluetooth Smart to connect to it from my Garmin device? Definitely 100% use AMP Plus. Uh, the reason for that is that you're gonna get those additional cycling dynamics metrics and also you won't block the connection to apps like Zwift and Train Road and whatever else you want. Which gets right into the next question. Can I use my Garmin Edge and Zwift or Train Road, whatever I want at the same time? Yes, you can use AMP Plus and Bluetooth Smart concurrently, it broadcasts both of them concurrently, so you can use them both at the same time. You have unlimited AMP Plus connections, but you are limited to one concurrent Bluetooth Smart connection. Next, does this work on Garmin Vector 3S? That's the left only pedal. Yes, it's applicable for both Garmin Vector 3 and Garmin Vector 3S. It is not, however, applicable to Garmin Vector 2 and 1 and anything else because of the fact that those do not have the hardware in them to support this. This is something they plan for from a hardware standpoint and therefore shows up just fine. Next question, which power meter should I get? I've written an entire post down there, power meter guide, check that out. Um, updated just like two months ago, three months ago with every single power meter, literally every single power meter in the market is listed in that guide, goes through in incredible detail and allows you to choose what you want based on your requirements. 
which then gets the final question I hear all the time, which power meter pedal should I get? Vector 3, Fevera Siomo, or PowerTap P1s? Again, it's sort of the same thing. I have a separate guide though, just for that. Also in the description there, where I go into an incredible, insane amount of detail. Like I measured the um, angle when you go to try to corner, all this kind of stuff like that is all in that guide there. Um, but again, down the description link there, tons and tons of detail. With that, thanks for watching. Remember the update may take up to 24 hours to show up, so it might not show up like right this second, but it should be pretty soon. One pro tip for jump starting stuff is if you have an Edge device 520, 820, or 1030, um, you can go ahead and use Garmin Web Updater. It's a desktop app you can download. It looks like it's from the 1980s, but it does a really good job of getting the sensor stuff updated on your Edge super quickly. Usually that's the fastest secret little squirrel club way to get things updated on your Garmin devices. It's old, but it's kind of like grandpa. It just keeps on working. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you found this useful, go ahead and whack that like button at the bottom or the subscribe button. Plenty more sports technology goodness coming up. I've got like videos lined up like airplanes into JFK airport. Have a good one.